Hey guys, welcome back to EMT Made Easy. My name is John and today I'm going over the lifespan. So I'm not going over every single group for the lifespan. I'm just gonna hit up on the younger side of the lifespan. Before I get into it, just realize that the numbers are going to be off a little bit. It depends on which book you're reading. I'm going off of the AHA guidelines, uh, but your book might be a little different. Don't freak out. The exact numbers are never going to match up. All right. As long as you're within that range that you need to be in, that's really all that matters. Start freaking out when it's like 10, 10, 10 plus or minus or plus or minus 10. That's when it matters. But for now, yes, your respirations are going to be a little off, maybe by like one or two or five. Um, but it's not a huge deal. All right. So the way I break these down is for the younger side is you have your baby category, which includes neonates and infants. Then you have your little person category, which includes toddlers, preschoolers, and school age uh, individuals. Now for your baby category, your neonate is going to be from birth to one month. That's your neonate, okay? That's what that means. Now, their heart rate needs to be above 100. Now, typically it's going to be between 100 and 205 or 200, depending on which book you read. But really, we care more about just making sure that the heart rate for a neonate is above 100. If it's above 100, we're good to go with these, with these kids. Your respirations are going to be between 30 and 53. And keep in mind that as the patient gets older, everything is going to decrease, okay? So the respiration rate is going to decrease. The heart rate is going to decrease. The range is going to decrease. For your blood pressure, that's a little different. That actually goes up as the age goes higher. So as your patient gets older, the blood pressure tends to go up in age with the patient, all right? So that's gonna, that's gonna elevate. But your respirations and your heart rate, usually they decrease, all right? That's normal. All right, so as far as what's hypotension. So hypotension means that the systolic number, so the systolic number is way too low. It's not good. If it's below 60 millimeters of mercury, the systolic, that's hypotension for an, a neonate. Now, the normal systolic rate uh, range for a neonate is between 67 to 84. That's that top number. And the normal diastolic, the rest, the pressure, when it's resting, the, when the heart is resting, it's between 35 and 53. Um, again, these are gonna be a little off from your textbook, but it's not a huge deal. The ranges should still kind of line up pretty good. All right, so the next level is an infant. So an infant, this, this is the patient that's between one month to one year of age, all right? The heart rate, again, it's kind of going down a little bit. Here you want it between 100 and 109. If it's a little bit above 109, it's not a huge deal, but we definitely don't want it up below 100. Now for infants, we're gonna start CPR if the heartbeat is below 60 per minute, okay? That's when you wanna start CPR for an infant. A respiration rate between 30 and 53. Blood pressure, the systolic, that's gonna go up a little bit higher. You see the difference, how it kind of went up about, it jumped up about 10 to 15 or 20 uh, units. It's between 72 to 104. That's the systolic, that top number, okay? So when that heart's contracting, that pressure through the vessels should be between 72 and 104. Um, your hypotension, 70 is hypotension, so below 70. So it's going up. You see how this is going up, but the heart rate and respiration rate is going down. That's normal, that's, that's what you want. The other category, so that's the baby category right there, right? So we have your neonate and you have your, your infants, that's the baby category. So actually in most EMT books, you won't even see neonate um, until maybe later on in the program you won't see it in lifespan but i'll put it in here because i think it's pretty important um it's good to at least know what's going on and kind of have an idea of what a neonate is so that's just a baby from birth to one year it's a neonate um so these are these are your numbers for the baby category that i, I call the baby category your next category your next chunk is the little person category which has three subcategories within that you have your toddlers which are from age one to three years of age, 
Then you have your preschoolers, which are from three years to five years of age. And then you have your school age, which is from six to 11 years of age. Now, again, your book might say otherwise. Your book might have a different range for these, th this age group. So it might be from like two to five or one to four. Um, but it's all kind of the same. Uh, don't freak out about the age. Every book's just different because I think they have to be different because they don't want to be seen as they're copying each other. I don't know what's going on, but they, it's going to be a little different, okay? But don't freak out. Now, so for your toddlers, you want to go ahead, um, make sure the heart rate is between 98 to 140. That's good for a toddler. Respiration rate's more between 22, 37. That's good. Um, as far as the blood pressure goes, so your systolic is between 86 to 106 that top number and the bottom number diastolic is between 42 to 62 it's only a 20 unit gap between those two um this one also top one now this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky as far as hypotension so for hypotension when that systolic is too low you're gonna do a little bit of math it's not even that much so hypotension is just get the number 70 so number 70 times the age in years times two. So if the kid is, let's say that we're dealing, I don't know, with a five-year-old. So if it's a five-year-old, it's gonna be, what's five times two, 10 plus 70. That's what your hypotension is gonna be right there. All right, so moving on. I hope I made that clear. I'm not sure, I'm having an off day today. So um, if not, let me know, leave a comment in the bottom. I'll correct that, not a big deal. So it's 70 plus years times two, okay? That's hypotension. So I'm gonna go, just go ahead and say it again. So if your kid, I should have put a plus sign there to kind of make it easier. So plus. So if the kid is five years old, you're gonna multiply that by two, that gives you 10 plus 70, equals 80 so if it's below 80 the blood pressure that's going to be hypotension and it kind of makes sense because uh let's go over here so 89 to 112 is kind of normal for this age group preschool which is between three and five but if you were to get the age let's say it was a five-year-old times that by two or multiply it by two then add it to 70 you have 80 it falls below your systolic and that's hypotension okay i hope if i did mess that up at the beginning that i kind of clarified it right now um, all right so moving on so your, your toddlers between one and three preschool between three years of age and five and then you have your school age kids from six to eleven okay um, again your heart rate is going to increase is going to decrease as the age gets older so for toddlers, the heart rate is going to be between 98 to 140. That's okay. For your preschooler, it's going to be between 80 and that should be 120. For your school age, it gets a little lower. Between 75 to 118, they're starting to get older now. So the reason behind this is that in proportion, they have less volume, right? They have less blood in their system. So if you have less blood, that means you have less blood to carry the O2 to where it needs to go. Therefore, everything needs to pump faster, get to where it needs to go faster. As you get older, in proportion, you build up more fluid inside your body. You have more blood. So your heart doesn't have to pump as fast, all right? That's why. Uh, respirations, also they're gonna go up, increase. So at a toddler between 22 and 37, that's a good respiration rate, it's not a big deal. Uh, as a preschooler between 20 and 28, that's pretty good. And then on the older side, between six to 11, between 18 to 25, that's pretty good also. Blood pressure, so that little equation of 70 plus the, the years times two, that's gonna, that's for your little, your little person group. So for your toddlers, your preschoolers, and your school-age kids, you're gonna use that equation. So only for three. And this, might, this, this chunking might actually help you out. Like, where do I use that equation? When do I not use it? So for your baby category, neonates and infants, you don't need that equation. You don't, it's not gonna help you out. 
for your little person category, your, your toddlers, your preschoolers, and your school age, that's when you use the, the equation, only for those three subcategories, right? And if it's below that, you have hypotension in your patient. Now let's go over some um, special consideration. And this applies to all, to every single one of these categories, the lifespan of the younger crowd, okay? Um, they're all gonna have pretty flexible tracheas. So if you were to feel your trachea right now, you can feel the rings, they're pretty hard, right? They're pretty sturdy. Well, especially for this category here, and even the toddler category, it's real flexible. The bones haven't solidified yet. Um, so have you ever heard of the, the green stick fracture where the bone gets bent, but it's only a linear fracture, a little fracture, the bone isn't actually broken? Well, that's why, because their bones aren't solidified yet. So the trachea is very soft. So if you were to go to do a head tilt chin lift on a baby or uh, an infant, you wanna be very careful not overextend because you might actually kink that airway. And that's why this is a big deal for all, all of them. Also, their tracheas, their airway in general is smaller. The passage down to their lungs is smaller. So that's why they're more prone to choking um, and having an airway obstruction. They're, they got bigger heads. Really what matters is the occipital portion, the back portion, that's what's bigger. So again, if they're laying flat, you want to pad underneath the shoulders, get that airway nice and straight uh, because they have that going on. With your uh, neonates, they're going to cry no matter what, what usually. So there's nothing much to talk about as far as like psychological, but for your infants and your toddlers, um, even your preschoolers, these, you really want to have a, a, a parent present because they, they tend to really freak out if their parent isn't with them. Um, especially for the infant, they, they want normalcy. They want what's familiar. So having the patient nearby, I mean the patient's parent nearby is really gonna help you out. Um, any one of these, having the, the, the parent help you out, be a part of the, the assessment, uh, the treatment, have them hold the NRB for the baby or for the toddler, that's really gonna help you out too. Um, for your little person toddler, these kids, they're starting to kind of figure out and observe the world and experiment. So they're really prone to a lot of accidents. At preschool, they start building their judgment. Um, as far as psych psychology goes, they build up their judgment and they start learning right from wrong, comparing their lives to their friends' lives, stuff like that. At this age though, you want to treat them more like little adults because they actually, they're growing up. Uh, show them respect. You want to be, come down to their eye level within reason for pretty much any one of these. You'll seem less threatening and they'll like you more. For your preschooler, what really helped me out was kind of coming down to their level as far as like what their likes and dislikes are. So if you see that the kid has a Power Ranger shirt, uh, mention what your, which one is your favorite Power Ranger, stuff like that. That really helps them out. It kind of makes them feel better about you uh, and it makes the call go all the way around just much better. Um, I hope I um, gave you guys some good information today. That's really all I have to go on as far as the lifespan. I'll make another video sometime about the adults. Um, but this is what you really need to know. Um, like I said, don't freak out about the numbers being a little off. They're always going to be a little off. Every textbook is different. It's just the way it is. Peace out. Good luck out there.